Tis the season to be jolly and joyous. Voila. With the burst of pleasure, we feel it arrive. Voila. It's a season when the saints can employ us. Take it away, Ian. I want to be the very <laughs> best. Like no, no one ever. Well, <laughs> what? have you never seen a Muppet Christmas Carol? Uh, what's a Muppet? Hello, everybody. Welcome to the- <laughs> what you fucking asshole. Anyway, happy holidays, everyone. Uh, welcome to th- this. Today, we're going to be talking about Sonic Prime, your two favorite hosts. I am one of your favorite hosts, the Silver Race 01. Joining me is your other favorite host, Ian Waffles. Ian, say hi. Hi. Uh, it, it, yeah. Whoa. Whoa. That, this, oh, should I, should I, should we redo that opening? No, we, fuck it. No. <laughs> um, say, anyway. Are you going to ruin my solo? No, of course not. Have you actually never seen a Muppet Christmas Carol, though? No. What? I'm not a Muppet boy. I was an Elmo boy. I was never. I've never been a Muppet boy either. But dude, the Muppet Christmas Carol is good as fuck. It's like the best rendition of a Christmas Carol. I see. I see. I thought the Flintstones did it the best. I've never seen that one. <laughs> I don't even know anyway. if I have. I just know it exists. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, anyway, um, Christmas Carol uh, adaptations aside, that's a that's. When we do a Christmas Carol chaos, we'll we'll talk about that one. But uh, yes, yes, yes. anyway, um, so today we're here to talk about Sonic Prime. Should we just jump right into this, Ian? I, I guess don't... we could go into like because um, we've talked about this. I think we did like a theory video. Yes, um, like last and year. I, I I guess I guess real quick we could just go like quick. First of all, I guess I would I would warn about spoilers, but there's nothing in this show to spoil, so you're probably fine. Um, yeah, uh, but regardless, I, we will be talking about every episode, everything that happens. So yeah, so just if you haven't seen the show yet, uh, click off now. Um, and uh, I guess real quick, we could just give our our brief overall thoughts before we go into more specifics. Um, sure, Ian, you, 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 Ian, you go first. You t- you take this bullet first. <laughs> All right, fine. Um, sure, the show's really bad. Uh, <laughs> and the main thing about it that is really bad is that um, I came for a Sonic show where Sonic would be cool and or engaging and for cool things to happen. And instead, the show said, hey, do you like Sonic? And I said, yes. Well, he's definitely in it. Do you like the multiverse? Uh, Yeah, multiverses are pretty cool. Okay, we will do the bare minimum, which is dystopia, pirates, jungle. And we will put no twist on it whatsoever. So that's the show. Uh, It's really boring. It's really lame. And uh, it basically feels like every other kid's show, only Sonic is in it. Only Sonic doesn't feel like Sonic. He feels like every other kid's show hyperactive protagonist, meaning it's worthless. So, um, yeah, I would just like to say to everyone, I, went, I, I wanted to like this show. I went in skeptical because, you know, again, I just felt like, oh, yeah, we're doing pirates and uh, jungles. And I was like, that doesn't seem like... It just seems like you know, you're just slapping a new coat of paint on these things. It very much felt like a show targeted at a younger demographic than myself, which duh, obviously we're we're adults. But I meant like even even younger than that. You know, it didn't feel like it was kind of trying to do an all ages thing. It felt very much more geared towards like we're trying to get the kids, which is fine. Uh, it's not how the show was marketed, but whatever. I was gonna um, say I would say a, a big problem with that is the fact that the show very clearly is for Sonic fans because it. You, nothing would make sense if you're not a Sonic fan because they don't even spend time to oh. develop their own main characters. <laughs> no, no, this is a horrible like introduction. If you know nothing about these characters, but but my favorite part is when seven episodes in, they're like, "Hey, do you know Knuckles? This is Knuckles. Let's show a flashback to <laughs> Knuckles." But, <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself, but no. So, but then I uh, I watched that that episode one premiere uh, on Roblox. And I was like, you know what? This is actually pretty good. This was a fun first episode. I like this. Um, and so from there, I was like, okay, okay, this is going to be good. This is going to be good. And so then, you know, the, uh, the, the, that day rolls around. And I'm like, all right, time to watch through all this. And then I would say the first three episodes are pretty decent. Nothing great, but, you know, they get the show going. They get you interested. There's some fun stuff in there. I will say, even in those first three episodes, pretty much any time there's an action scene, my eyes just glaze over. Um, <laughs> like, that, like, because, and we'll get into this later, but, like, action scenes are only fun if you care about the characters involved in them, and I cared about no one in this. 
but or if they're just really really good looking yeah and the, the show looks pretty good we can and we'll get into that later but as soon as you hit episode four and you get to the jungle for me at least this show loses all momentum and starts g- crashing and burning and then like you get through that jungle two-parter which i think is probably the worst point in the show and then they go back to new york and then it just it just the show just never quite recovers so for me it's like i wouldn't say the show is awful i think it certainly has the potential to to rescue itself but um I don't think after eight episodes, one third of the season in, I should be saying, oh, it's not awful. And oh, it should be able to rescue itself. It should be like, oh, this is really good. And I want to see more. So, that's- yeah, that's kind of the thing I've been seeing the most from people is like, well, it's decent. Like, it's passable. It's not bad, you know, and that's good enough. I'm like, but what if it was just like good? Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's, that's the not thing, right? I don't think that's too hard. <laughs> no, and well, and the thing is, right, is it's like, you know, on the one hand, I want to be like, well, it's a, it's a cartoon show for babies. And so, you know, should I, as a grown man, really be that hard on it? But it's like, I mean, some of my favorite shows are cartoons for babies, like Spectacular Spider-Man, Batman Beyond, Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes, like all, you know, cartoons geared towards children and all of which I believe could be enjoyed by both kids and adults and have complex themes and are, you know, really fun. Now, that's not to make this like an old cartoons versus new cartoons thing, because there are old cartoons that were dumb, and there are new cartoons that are smart. That's not what this is about. I'm just saying, like, cartoons can be smart and can be engaging for all ages, and this one isn't. Yeah. Um, And I, I think my big problem with that is for, is first of all again just you know i think kids deserve better i think just going like oh it's for kids whatever who cares is you know i think that's giving it an excuse that it shouldn't be getting but also again that's not how the show was marketed um for those of you who have been here since the start which i will say this this series definitely feels weird to me because i remember when it was first announced and I remember just being in like such a different place in my life. And like, I remember waking up that morning and looking at my phone and seeing like, Oh, Sonic prime multiverse. That'll be fun. I mean, there's literally a video on this very channel of like basically my first reactions to it, but that's neither here nor there. But if you guys remember that first, the, you know, kind of cycle, there were, you know, statements by the creators being like, you know, Oh no, this is going to be like a similar tone to like generator Rex, you know, maybe even more. So it was like, Oh damn, like really? Okay. Um, and that was a fucking lie. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, Ian, I gotta say, we did our like speculation theory crafting podcast like last year, a little over a year ago. And mm-hmm. I gotta tell you, I think we pitched a much better show. Yeah, I think um, Evil Sonic idea was a better idea than what's in the show. <laughs> I think any, I, honestly, I think, because um, during that podcast, I said like, oh, you know, I was excited until I saw the concept art and I realized, like, every episode was just going to be like, oh, it's Knuckles, but it's a pirate, or it's Amy, but it's a cave woman. Honestly, I think even if it was just that, I think it was just, oh, every episode, Sonic's getting thrown into a new dimension and he's having to do a new thing. I think even that would be better than what we get. So, oh, yeah. At, I agree. Like, at least then you'd be, you know, you'd be changing settings, you'd be seeing new characters, you'd be like, yeah, this is just boring. Like, I was just so bored watching this. <laughs> Yeah, um, like, and I feel like I've I've found like the best um, analogy I could, maybe not analogy. Ian, do you remember uh, a few months ago when I first started watching Steven Universe? I remember I told you one of the best things about the show is the eleven minute episode structure, because if you know for whatever reason you're not vibing with an episode, by the time you realize you're not vibing with an episode, the episode's basically already over. Well, and I'll say the same thing. Uh, I'm watching Adventure Time right now. And I think that's what gives that show a lot of breadth. And like, if there's an episode I don't care about, I'm like, oh, well, I'm already like a third done. So whatever. Yeah. Imagine that. But like the exact opposite. (laughs) And that's this show. It's like, oh, man, I'm not really feeling this jungle plot. Oh, I'm five minutes into the first episode that's doing this plot of two episodes. That's 25 minutes. And yeah. (laughs) Yeah. No, it's and it's just so. And also, okay, so. I guess we could try and go through and break down kind of the different settings. So you, we get to New York and honestly, okay. I have two ways I could, you could try and fix this series because here's, I, I genuinely wonder if it was originally pitched as something more similar to what I said, where it's like, Oh, yep. Every episode we're going to a new world and we're doing a new wacky adventure. 
And then someone from either the budgeting or the animation came down and was like, are you insane? <laughs> like, <laughs> um, Cause I think even during our speculation podcast, I was like, dude, like wouldn't it be really expensive to like model all these different alternate universes? And uh, seemingly I was right. Uh, yeah. So I think the way you kind of get around that is I think there's two ways. I think one, just do new yoke. Like why are like these other worlds should like suck and don't need to be here. Yeah. So just have the show be Sonic breaks the fucking thing. He gets sent to this world where uh, Robotnik is in charge. And by the way, we'll get to the Chaos Council. They suck too. Um, he gets sent to this world where Robotnik's in charge. And then the show is him meeting alternate versions of his friends and having to get the pieces of the Paradox Prism, put it back together to fix the world. Or the second option, if you're going to do this thing where it's like, oh, we're going to these different worlds, but we only have the budget for like three worlds. At the very least, have different characters. Don't just have it be the same five characters over and over and over again. Well, like, and my and my big problem with the show too is the idea of the fact that not that it's the same five, but more of like, so who who in the show am I supposed to care about? It would just be Sonic, right? Because all these other characters are no name nobodies. They're practically OCs wearing the skin flesh suits of the characters I do know. And those characters aren't in the show. So, <laughs> well, that's and that, that's the thing. Is sorry, go on. No, you're good. No, that's off. No, and that's the thing. Is that it's just like these. Yeah, this show doesn't have characters. <laughs> like it has a character, um, which is Sonic. And then you have like the the ones we get the second most amount of time with are the New York versions of the characters, which I think for what they're given do fine. I like nine. Um, I and like nine is the only thing in the show. I like <laughs> besides yeah, like, I... some of the fight scenes and like some of the character animation. Yeah. Um, I like nine, you know, I think, um, I think Rouge and Knuckles have potential, but you barely, you know, you don't get to see them much. I think Rusty Rose is just a well of untapped potential that they've just, it, I mean, like I said, it's untapped and I'm sure. And by the way, to head off some comments. Yes. I know it's maybe unfair to be judging the show you know, with when we don't have a complete story. And I'm sure they will do something with Rusty Rose in the future in the next uh, 16 episodes. However, if I may, you know, bring up cartoons from my past again, eight episodes into Spectacular Spider-Man, I, would I wouldn't be going like, man, you know, this is really underutilized. And man, they really need to do more of this. And man, this kind of sucks. I would be going, man, those eight episodes were great. I can't wait to see the rest of it. Like, <laughs> um, yeah, no, I mean, to put it my, uh, more in my idea would just be that uh, by the end of these eight episodes, I should know more than Sonic and like these, like you know, these like OCs or whatever. I feel like uh, I don't know. I feel like they should be better than I am crazy Knuckles Pirate, uh, I am crazy Amy Jungle Girl, and then Nine's good. But <laughs> yeah, nine, Nine's fine. But uh, yeah, and I think honestly, I but yeah, like oh, and my second way you fix it is like take. And I don't think this would fix the show like from a writing or from a you know foundation perspective. It you know, okay, so we're doing a pirate world. You know who'd be really good for that? The Babylon Rogues. Why not take why not make Knuckles Jet? Why not, you know, combine Rouge and Amy, make that uh, a wave? And why is Big not Storm? Like it you would they're not the characters we know anyway. Like you it would just be a reskin. But at the very least, like you oh, we're doing a jungle episode, you know, you'd be good for that, sticks. And by the way, I don't like sticks. I don't like the Babylon Rogues, but, it, you know, at least it'd be new stuff. Like, my problem is this show is very much the equivalent of, like, dangling its keys in front of the audience. But, like, at least dangle your keys in front of me better, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, at least make me go, like, ooh, I know that character. And not, like, oh, I know that character. I saw three other versions of him. Well, yeah. Um, I agree. I guess yeah, if no. we want to, I guess if we want to, like reel it back a little bit so that we can have a little more structure do we want to go like arc by arc sure um one one thing i'd like to say before we do that though one thing i would say and i i feel like such like a like a like a like a dick saying this because it feels like such a dickish thing to say i would almost say this show is like built on a fundamentally flawed premise yeah i agree um, of like we're gonna send our. We're gonna have our. We're gonna have one main character. I feel like even if it was Tails and Nine, or Tails and Nine, Sonic and Nine, because uh, and again, getting a little bit ahead of ourselves, 
when nine picked Sonic up in episode five, six in the, the dimension car thing, I thought, yeah. okay, this is our thing. It's going to be Sonic and nine traveling through these different multiverses and getting the piece of the paradox prism. All right. So we get to see them bounce off each other and going through. The- nope. But I think, you know, again, not being able to con- these characters, because let's be real, they're not really characters. They're more so plot devices for Sonic to interact with, you know, making it so Sonic has to reintroduce himself to these different characters over and over and over again. Like, I just think, yeah, I, I think you would be much better off if you just either cut out the multiverse thing entirely and just made it New York, or if you're going to do the multiverse thing, again, have at least like bring nine along or bring someone along or just just do something just but what it is right now i feel like is the worst version of what this show could have been truthfully yeah i think the biggest um structural weakness with it is that um they set up like the main world and so that's the world that sonic wants to get back to yet they don't establish any character dynamics or friendships that i would want to see him return to considering all of his friends seem to like treat him like crap as a, <laughs> like that's- he's like, he starts off with like, ugh, Sonic, this guy, he's just being annoying. But then when we actually find out what he was doing, he was, like, doing everything he possibly could to get back to them, and Shadow got in his way. And then whenever he screws up fighting Eggman, the first thing he does, like, in a like a way emotionally mature person would, he just goes to tell, he's like, hey, man, I really messed up. I can tell you're upset at me. Uh, I just want to say I'm really sorry. You know, if, is there anything I can do? And then Tails is like, no, it's fine. So... Like, Sonic isn't, like, this, like, rash jerk that they all seem to think he is. But then sometimes he is. Like, in his flashback when he's, like, they're, like, happy birthday, Sonic. We got you a a pine tree or whatever. And he's, like, fuck you, Amy. I don't like (laughs) you. Here's the thing, Sonic. You shouldn't say that. It's not nice. But I'll say it for you. Amy, what the fuck? That was a horrible present, you idiot. So... So yeah. I'm, just getting, I'm getting so many mixed messages on like what I'm supposed to care about because it's like, okay, if, if, if you're just some kid who doesn't know who these characters are, why would you ever want Sonic to return home to his friends? They don't have any chemistry. So like, who cares? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I completely agree. And I think the, one of the, the big problem, Sonic, you know, Sonic messes up. You, you could argue he has like two screw ups in the, the show at the beginning. It's the, when he, you know, hits Robotnik so it like breaks the rock and reveals the paradox prism and when he shatters the paradox prism um and when he breaks the rock that reveals the paradox prism he's doing it because Robotnik is um you know insulting tails and he's getting upset about that and so it's like oh yeah no he's such an arrogant douchebag getting upset about someone insulting his friend um and then when the paradox prism is like you know it was just kind of he was mid punch when everyone was like, "Hey, wait, Sonic, no, don't." Yeah, do I was gonna say. Thing. By the way, um, that's another thing. The show seems to like they frame it when he finds this out as like, "I was just too busy focusing on winning. This is all my fault." I'm like, "Sonic, no, you literally weren't. You, they, everyone told you, hey, that thing is really like that thing. We can't let Eggman get it.'" And so you had two options that you chose. You you could have hit Eggman or you could have hit the the rock, and you just made a mistake. And and like yeah. you said. You, he only found out not to hit the rock while he was attacking it. So it's not his fault. Yeah. Or it's not his fault in the sense of like he was being arrogant or he wasn't listening. He just literally made a mistake. But the show's like, I was too focused on winning. What is my problem? I'm like, I don't think you did anything wrong, Sonic. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's the thing is that it's just like, you know, in terms of the, you know, self, like, you know, they coined the show as a show like self discovery and redemption. It's like, why does he need to be redeemed? Like he was. Like, he was yeah. seemingly doing fine. I was going to say, he has more of emotional maturity than most people. Most people would not have immediately went to their friend and be like, hey, I messed up. This is my fault. Is there anything I can do to make it up to you? Like, that's like some pretty mature stuff that Sonic is capable of. So, <laughs> Yeah. But, um, all right. Yeah, we can jump into just all, all two viewers we have left because they haven't left angrily. Um. We will talk about, uh, let's talk about episodes one through three, which is kind of the New York first bit. What did you think about it? I, I already said, I think it's the strongest bit of the show. I thought it was pretty good. Yeah, it was okay. Um, I think it has far too many fight scenes that just go on forever. Yep. Um, I think everyone who's not nine is not a character. Um, and I think Sonic is at his best best in these early ones like like real quick i want to say that devin mac i really like his portrayal of sonic i think he just at the very least has a really good ebb and flow like he's not he's not like early jason where every line has this inflection 
Um, he's very good at like weaving in and out. Like, you know, he needs to get serious for a line, you know, like, and he can go in between. Um, so I really like that. Um, and I think some of the things Sonic says would annoy me if it weren't for his voice kind of neutralizing it. Um, but yeah, um, the first section's okay. Like the only, it's just a boring dystopia, um, which I think is the big problem with all these worlds is that they have zero creativity in the bones. Like the robots, I can't even remember what they look like. Um, they have the baby robot, and I was like, okay. So the joke is going to be, because obviously it's like a super smart baby Eggman, the joke is going to be that since he can't talk, obviously, he would give himself like a voice modulator, and it would be like, oh, time for your infinite nap time. You know, something oh, really fun. stupid. But instead, it's just a whining baby in a robot. How creative. Um, yeah. We have a bunch of Eggman. Okay, that's a cool idea. But all of them are lame and boring. So, oops, we messed up. So that's kind of how I feel about the, the early section is that I think for the most part, it's just Sonic's in a dystopia, a really boring one with a bunch of boring characters, and he just fights a bunch of boring robots. But hey, the best part is Nine. Nine is super dope, because unlike all the other characters in the story that Sonic reacts to, what makes Nine really cool is that he is separate from so Sonic's friends, and then Sonic's friends act as the bridge, or, uh, the bridge between the two characters, which is what I thought they were going to do with all of them, where Nine hears about a Tails who has a friend who isn't alone and he's all like being a tsundere about it. But then he's like, well, what else did we do? And it's like, that's really cool. You get to see this vulnerable side of him. He wants that kind of a life and he gets to hear about it. And that's really cool. Um, and he's ride or die for Sonic for the rest of the, the, the show um, so far. So that's what makes him really interesting. And that's where I thought the rest of the show was going to go, but they kind of only tacitly play with that. But those are my general thoughts on that. On this um, thing. Yeah, I agree uh, with a lot of that. I think it's the strongest part of the show. I think one thing I actually really liked is that um, well, the way it's structured is that you as the audience know Sonic broke the Paradox Prism and that Sonic's the reason all this happened, but Sonic doesn't know that. And so I think that builds good tension with, you know, you're waiting for that shoe to drop of, you know, when is he going to find out that this is all his fault? You know, again, depending on how you feel about, you know, him view the, the show portraying it that way is this being all his fault, you know. Um, so I thought that was done pretty interestingly. I think, yeah, there's some fun action scenes. I think, again, a lot of it, I, my eyes just glazed over. I think the um, the one that I found the most uh, fun or the one I remember at least the most was when he teaches Tails and Knuckles to spin dash. Yeah, I was going to um, say the, the best fight, um, I think, in the whole show is the uh, stairwell scene. Yes. Because that um, one had actually like creative stuff going on. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, we just, uh, and then I'm trying to think about other stuff. Uh, ooh, one just complete, genuine compliment I can give the show. I love Rouge's design in the main universe. If anything from the show carries over into the games, I want that design. I love it to death. It looks great. Um, nice. I saw some people saying like it looks like a Sentai costume, to which I say, and let's um, go <laughs> yeah but um yeah no i uh in yeah i thought from what we saw like that scene of you know uh sonic and tails and uh, her in the workshop i actually really liked i thought I, I don't know if this says something about me but a lot of the comedy in the show actually like got me um like at like at the very least i think i chuckled at most of the jokes uh -huh. um Again, I don't know. I remember. I I just think I think I've seen a lot of people saying that they didn't much care for the comedy in this, but I don't know. Maybe again, maybe that says something about me. But I I thought a lot of it was funny. Um, yeah, like I didn't. The, uh, I didn't laugh too much, but I didn't think it was like terrible. I just yeah, didn't, I know this wasn't for me. Yeah. Um. Like I really remember. I really liked uh, Rouge's line of like, "You left the door open." <laughs> um, right. But uh, yeah. So I think I'm trying to just remember about that first arc. Um. It, the chaos council sucks i don't understand it like okay so i realized this when i was watching the first episode is that this is just the, the plot of ratchet and clank rift apart um <laughs> and the difference however is in that game when they break the thing and go to the dimension where the bad guy is winning is that it's a version of the bad guy who's like super evil and intimidating and competent whereas this it's just like fa it's like the worst, like most incompetent version of Eggman multiplied by five. 
Like, yeah. how much cooler would it have been if they was like, if it was like one Eggman who was like genuinely like super evil and like conniving, and you could maybe have like Orbot and Cubot there to like provide some levity. But or, like, I th- mm-hmm. sorry, go ahead. No, you go. You can finish. I just, but I just think that would have been so much more interesting than like, because I never like well and also they don't know about the multiverse so where did the other four even come from but like in terms of like the gimmicks of the other four like i think the only one that i even remotely found like amusing was the fact that dr deep is like a weeb uh-huh. um but other than that i just yeah i would have traded you know the five egg man for like just one like genuinely memorable one any day well and it gets to the general problem right of like it's not our egg man so who who fucking cares like <laughs> <laughs> Who cares if Sonic's interacting with a, a council of Eggmen if not one of them is ours? And I think that's the thing that I I was thinking, like, here's how you instantly fix the show. Sonic goes to each of the worlds and all the characters have like their, you know, are all because his friends got hit with the, the Paradox Prism, too. So in every one of the worlds, one of his friends is there, but their memories have been changed to fit that world. And we have to figure out which one is his friend. And through his relationship with them, they get to fig- they get to finish whatever the arc of the character world specific character is, and tie that into what Sonic knows about them. So let's say the Knuckles guy really was Knuckles, and he had like this big failure. Well, Sonic could tie that back to his failure when he believed, him, and we could tie that into some history so that we can learn more about this version of Knuckles and his relationship with Sonic. And then that would allow the the pirate Knuckles to finish his arc and then become our Knuckles. And then we can still keep the multiverse thing because now we have a Knuckles who is not only a big puncher boy, but he also has all the skills of his pirate form. So there you go. Each world we get to take a new version of our friends and kind of reconnect with them through the two multiverses. And how cool would it have been if in the Eggman world, because Eggman's so smart, he figured out that this was the multiverse. And so he is the leader of the Eggman Council. That would instantly make it better because then we would have a reason to care. (laughs) Yeah, instead of now, where we have no reason to care. Um, yeah, who cares if if a council of Eggmen take over this world? Fuck them. I don't know these people. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's one thing I think would have made it um better if they were just if this was just the one setting of the show was this post apocalyptic version of Sonic's world. Whereas, because obviously, you know, what we find out at the end of the show is like the the you know the main sonic universe doesn't exist anymore so which obviously that'll be fixed which i thought was self-explanatory apparently not um that's why when it was a twist when it was a twist at the end i was like wait really did did nobody else assume that the the point is that you shattered your universe so yeah it would be gone are you are you all stupid (laughs) (laughs) yeah well but um so what would have been really well i think would have been fun and again this is obviously much different from the show they were trying to make was like, no, this universe, the dystopian universe, is just our universe, but it's fucked up. And so we have to fix this world. And so there are some stakes tied into the dystopian world, because as it stands right now, yeah, there are no st- in any of the multiverse worlds Sonic goes to. And so the only stakes there are, you know, the only motivation you really care about is like, what, you know, so like, in your story, you, your char- your main character should want something. And the thing that keeps you invested is because you want the main character to get the thing that they want. Well, what does Sonic want? He wants to go home. I don't give a fuck. What? Like, why? Who cares? Like, they they don't, again, they don't give us enough time with home, with the characters from home. And they, I think they're really leaning on the fact that you as a fan of the games are going to want that to just come back inherently. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. That doesn't is- work. Yeah, that's why I was going to say, like, this whole excuse of, like, oh, it's just a kid's show. It's not for you. It's like, it clearly is for me, because I'm the only one who would care. Yeah. No kid well, is I... going to care that Sonic gets back with Knuckles or Shadow or Rouge or Amy. Who are these people? <laughs> yeah, well, and I, I real quick, back on your point about Knuckles. If Sonic Frontiers acts like Sonic wants to, like, make out with Knuckles, Sonic Prime acts like he, like, owes Knuckles money. <laughs> I know like, he hates that guy. Every yeah. time he brings him up, <laughs> except Knuckles, I hate that guy. <laughs> yeah, like, what? He's like, what Knuckles uh, do? Yeah, he's like, oh man, I'd even take Knuckles. Or like again, when he sees Doctor Dread, he acts like Doctor Dread. What's he like, Dread the pirate or whatever? Who gives a fuck? Um, he's like, oh man, it's Knuckles. He's gonna punch me like he did back when we met on Angel Island. I'm here. Watch this this flashback 16 bit cutscene, kids. It's like, oh no, I'm a I'm a friendly pirate. It's like, yeah. No, no, 
what? Like, I yeah. didn't know. Like, I guess the only assumption you can make is like, well, this is the first time he's meeting this Knuckles. And so the first time he met his Knuckles, he fought him, except that completely falls apart because it's been the first time he's met Knuckles twice now by the time we get to that point in the show. Yeah. Um. So anyway, yeah, the, the New York City saga is fine. Uh, I, I liked, I don't know, if I were to rate it, I'd give it like a seven, if I'm being generous. I really like the mech design of the main Eggman. I thought that looked cool. Uh, it's no mm-hmm. egg beater, but it's fun. Um, all right. Are we ready to move on to uh, the worst part of the show by far? Well, real, real quick, we should probably address um, Shadow's characterization. Oh, what? Okay. So Shadow, from what we see of him, is fine. However, I don't know if you've seen the stuff that's going around where, like, there was, I think there was, like, a cut line of him going, like, I don't care about the people who live on the planet, but I care about the planet, where it's like, what? I was going to say, I wouldn't say Shadow's fine. I would say he's obnoxious and annoying. <laughs> His whole, I, char- his whole character is that he walks up to Sonic. He's like, Sonic, I want to have a conversation by beating the shit out of you. And Sonic's like, that sounds like a horrible way to talk to someone. And he's like, Ugh, you just don't want to talk to me? I'll fucking kill you. I'm like, no <laughs> way. Like, he's awful. <laughs> um, Yeah, well, I think I don't have a problem with him going like, Sonic, you broke the thing, you fucking idiot. But the problem is then he tries going, no, wait, Sonic, you need to stop so I can explain the situation to you. It's like, well, maybe you shouldn't have punched him. <laughs> Well, um, no, and also, like, when he's doing that, it's because he has a vision of Sonic doing something, and so he attacks him first. So he has no excuse. <laughs> yeah, I I guess. I don't, I never particularly had a problem with Shadow. What I did have a problem with was the um, show dangling him in front of you again, like they're dangling their keys in front of you, going, oh, hey, Shadow's here. Shadow, they're going to do, Shadow's going to do something. We swear Shadow's going to do something. Shadow is definitely here, and he's going to do something. Just wait, wait. Oh, oh, here he is. Oh, and it's over. <laughs> well, um, and, and for me, it's not about like, uh, like I need him to be like the games or whatever, because clearly they're not going to do that anymore. Ships sailed. But why would I ever find this version of Shadow cool? From what I can tell, he's just an angry idiot. Like he doesn't do anything right in the story. And he's just a jerk. So what would be there to like about him? Yeah, no, I, I get you. I, I personally didn't have a problem with him, but I certainly wasn't like, Woo, Prime Shadow is the best shadow uh, by the time all was said and done. Um, yeah, I did. But, like, man, the shadow discourse that's been going around is... I will um, say with uh, with this, it definitely confirms that, like, I mean, I always believed it, but, like, you know how, like, in IDW, like, everyone's just like, Shadow sucks to write, we're not doing it. Well, I guess this proves it, too, because he's exactly the same. So <laughs> Yeah, no, I just... I guess the only I think the saving grace of this shadow is again, you know, I talked about how they just keep dangling in front of him in front of the viewers to go like, oh hey, shadow's coming. Maybe that's for the best. Like maybe it's for the best that he just like isn't allowed to like speak or do things for most of the show. I think um, his voice actor helps because um, he doesn't have vampire shadow. Um, yeah. So he just kind of sounds like a dude, and I think that makes him a little less hateable. Um, but yeah, no, shadow's an idiot. Uh, he's not fun. And uh, but I did like his fight with Sonic. I thought that was one of the few fights that I thought was like enjoyable. Um, yeah, that was it had some really snappy choreography. By the way, it's very funny that uh, I guess Chaos Emeralds you can just find them in rocks now. Yeah, that was so fucking funny. I was just go yeah, if you're like rocks. some random kid, what are you supposed to take from like him being like Chaos Control? I'm teleporting through time. Yeah, I again, yeah, you're not wrong. It's like when I remember, um. A couple years back, I was working on a video. I was like scripting out um, my pitch for a Sonic cartoon. One thing I um I said was the way you solve this is Ian. Do you remember? Did you ever watch uh, Earth's Finest Heroes, the Avengers cartoon? Yeah. So what they did before the show started was there were like uh, these shorts that were like on the Disney website, and I think they aired during like commercial breaks or like between like main shows. Yeah that were like these quick, like three to five minutes uh, segments that basically were like a solo adventure of each Avenger and gave you like their backstory and everything you needed to know. So when they eventually came together in the show proper, you knew who all of them were. Yep. Um, and uh, my pitch was always, if you were doing a new Sonic cartoon and you wanted to just kind of throw the, the audience into the middle of it, just do that. Just have like again, like short three to five minute segments, yeah, and get again Tyson, the, get Tyson has to make like little mini things. Yeah, and so 
you know, it's like, oh yeah, Shadow. You know, he was made on the Ark. Uh, the other friend Maria, she got, she died. Uh, him and Sonic saved the world, and then he came back, and now he's here. Like, so that way, if you are like little Timmy, you're like, oh, well, why is he, why is he smashing rocks, and why is the shiny rock make him teleport? Like, you know, <laughs> like, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, no, I, I agree with you because again, like, the problem with all these characters is that, like, what. I, I don't like that Sonic's cast, their character is now that they're all nice, but Shadow. Like, Amy's yeah. character is that she is just nice. Tails' character is that he is smart and just, like, generally nice. Like, like who cares? Yeah. Sonic's character is that he is nice. Well, oh, and, uh, I don't even get me started on, on that whole thing. But, um, yeah, no, I... Yeah, no, again, I didn't have a particular problem with shadow in this, but again, that might just be because he wasn't around enough to annoy me. Yeah. That's um, fair. Yeah. Although I will see, I have seen this kind of idea going around of like, well, yeah, shadow doesn't need to like live to honor Maria's wish because he left that behind him in shadow, the hedgehog to which I would say, I think you missed the point of shadow, the hedgehog. <laughs> um, because you could say, yes, he is no longer fighting for Maria. However, in the very next game, he is still a good guy and he is still fighting for humanity because that is what he wants to do. Like that'd be the equivalent of saying Spider-Man doesn't fight for Uncle Ben anymore. He fights because it's the right thing to do, except like he's like ah, Spider-Man doesn't need to fight for Uncle Ben anymore. So he should just be able to act like however we want him to act like that's the what? That's the dumbest yeah. thing I've ever heard. Yeah, it's um, very dumb. Like, I don't need Maria to ever be mentioned again. That's fine. Because, like, I don't, like, if they, if the modern whatever fan, like, it seems like Sega really wants to, like, delete the, like, Shadow's backstory. Because even in this game, right, what's Shadow's backstory? That Shadow. He's, like, my angry rival. Anyway, like, <laughs> yeah, until Sonic Movie 3 comes out and suddenly they care again. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> that's, that's the one hope, right, is that, uh, yeah is that the movie, since they can kind of do whatever they want, it seems, and, like, the writer has even said, like, Shadow is a is a character who is, like, marked by tragedy, and he's someone who Sonic wouldn't be able to just, like, go to and be like, hey, here's how, you know, uh, here, you know, here you can just be better, like Knuckles. So they seem to understand him, and if they get that right, then, hey, maybe uh, we can actually get what we want. <laughs> maybe maybe Seg will be like, wait, people like Shadow when he's, like, well-written? fuck what were we doing <laughs> so well which, it's so weird because i feel like that the majority of the discourse around shadow nowadays and i guess i think we as a fan base drastically overestimate like our reach um but like i feel like pretty much anytime shadow's character is like a, a topic of discussion it is it's bad and we don't like it um but anyway um now should we get into should we just dive into the jungle yeah let's go this is the worst fucking part of the show by far. No <laughs> contest. I hated every second of it. It no everyone is unlikable. It is a stupid conflict. I cannot believe they wasted two 25 minute episodes on it. it like, the premise I, already. Sorry, go on. Yeah. I was going to say I love that in this world we get the little thing of like so we were just like picking berries and the name just went like fucking insane and tried to murder us it's like okay <laughs> so that's their sonic adventure cutscene. but what's what's her cutscene gonna tell us about it it's like all right so they were picking berries and then i went over and i was like no don't eat berries and they were like bro i'm gonna eat berries and i was like well they have to die so that's my sympathetic backstory i'm like so she's just crazy like <laughs> she's just crazy like and it's it's but yeah it's 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 a dumb premise because it's like, what are you even trying to say about like environmentalism or like, is, is this like, I would almost, if I were trying to read in like more into this and I shouldn't, because it would involve putting vastly more thought into it than the people who wrote it did. I'd be like, is this like almost like a thinly veiled message about like environmental activists are like actually crazy. Like, I don't, I don't think that's what they were getting at. Yeah. But like it. you could, but like, yeah. Cause and, like, you can make the argument, like, Knuckles and Big were literally, like, ripping trees out of the ground. So, like, no, there's there's an argument to be made on both sides. But, like, 
it, no, it, all four people who live in Jungle World are ruining the planet. No, yeah, that's the other thing is that there's only four people. <laughs> It's only four people who live here. Fuck off, Amy. Like- right? Like, <laughs> like that's the thing. And that's it's also it's just like what the fuck? Like, I it, it, it's the epitome of like if anyone just like had a brain in their head and just talked to one another for like a second, this would have been very easily solved. Um, well, and like and like I always like to push back on like the people just talk because in real life people don't talk and that's how conflict happens. The difference is is when it's like, okay, well, the reason they're not talking should be engaging or interesting. If it's annoying, then fuck you. You should have just talked. Like, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. there's nothing to this conflict, you know? Nope. Absolutely not. And the whole idea yeah. is, like, Sonic is trying to, like, convince them to, like, let bygones be bygones or whatever. And it's like, no, Sonic, she's insane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, she is wrong. Like, she is just wrong. Like, the... Yeah. Like I, and yeah, and it's like, and again, it's it's. I remember they take, but they don't give back. I'm sorry, girl, but four people can take as much as they want on your planet. You don't even have cars. Die, like go away. The the one thing I'll give it is when we first saw the concept art, and uh, I didn't watch anything past like the initial like one minute trailer, so I didn't know whether or not this would be the case. I really assumed it would just be like that SpongeBob episode where they would just like not be able to talk. At least they like talked and talked in full sentences cuz I can only imagine how fucking un- even more so unbearable this story would have been if they would have been like me you no know, like them break take trees out of ground like yeah. Um but yeah, so I mean I guess that's something. But yeah, no, like this was a fucking nightmare. Like I remember this being like this isn't like, because again, episodes one through three, I'm digging it. I'm vibing with it. I'm on the train. And this is when I was like, oh, this is, this isn't great. Uh, Hopefully the next world will be better. And then, I mean, we'll get to that. But like, yeah, no, this just, this sucks. Like, this is not good. Like, well, and we, we, it, it uh, introduces one of the worst problems of the game or the, the show, which is Sonic will go to each world and be like, ah, obviously you are all my old friends. And then they'll be like, we are obviously not that. And we have no recollection of who you are. And we're trying to kill you. And he's like, oh, you guys, oh, you silly villains. Can we stop though? And you can like be yourselves. It's like Sonic. And they do this every time, every time he meets a new version. He's like, whoa, what's that guy? And they're like, I am obviously not that guy. And they're like, he's like, yeah, you are buddy. Oh, I can't wait. And it's awful. (laughs) <laughs> yeah and again and it's just like and again it's just all the same characters and like I, like all i didn't really find any of like the cave person designs fun because like i feel like that's what's got to be right is that like the reason that they're doing this kind of path with the multiple dimensions is so they could like sell toys so they can just make designs to sell toys of um that's probably a very cynical way of looking at it but that that's how it felt to me when i was looking at, like meta watching it i was like this feels like like it was made by someone trying to sell toys um yeah but like none of the cave person designs or toys I would want to buy. Like at least I think the pirate designs were fun. Again, I didn't care much for the pirate world either, but I thought again, they were fun. Like, so like I would want, you could see someone wanting a toy of them. Whereas with these like cave woman, Amy, her design is just a fucking mess. Like, ugh. um, I will say though, um, the animation, I thought like the scene where like they're in the dark and you see the lights coming off of Sonic's gloves and shoes. I thought that looked pretty. Um, well, and I will say one thing where I think they were creative is I do appreciate that in every world he gets new gloves uh, and new shoes and they have different things like that's about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the, I. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. Do you have anything else to say about Jungle World? I um, it has one of the, it has the last fight that I enjoy, which is um, it's not even really a fight, but it's like the little chase sequence where Sonic is like trying to chase after Amy on her bird with the new hammer and, like, there's, like, a part where he, like, lands on the hammer, and then she, like, swings it, and he jumps off the branches and then lands on it on the other side. Like, it, I don't know. I thought there's some creative stuff with that that was kind of fun, but that was about it. Oh, real um, quick. So this is another thing that's very strange. So they give Amy this bird. Um, yes. <laughs> and it's not Birdie from Adventure, because that's a blue bird. But it is the pink bird, which is Gamma's bird. So, and I don't think they're trying to imply it's Gamma, but if you're if you're a Sonic fan... Then you're just like, wait, that's Gamma's bird. Or you're just like, it's just a random bird. So who cares? This isn't from the games. And then if you're not a fan, then she just has a bird 
and she has no chemistry with the original universe bird. So, like, they bring up this bird every time, like, when Sonic sees, like, there's a bird inside Robot Amy. And he's like, oh, now you've done it now. I'm like, now they've done it? It wasn't when your your friend you thought was a cyborg, like, brainwashed monster. Now that there's a bird inside her, you're upset? What? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I, just, one I don't th- know what the, the deal with this bird is. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's just... I think it was another a uh, cheap way to try and pull on like audience heartstrings where it's like she has a cute little bird, guys. Like yeah, she doesn't yeah. interact with it, but you know. Yeah, it's there. Um I will say that one last thing. The jungle world I think was where I first realized that every world would just be the same five characters reskinned over and over again because I think I saw something on Twitter. I don't I think it was someone who worked on the show saying like they got asked like, "Oh, is is are we going to see just those five characters or are we going to see more characters?" And they were like, it's mainly going to be those five, but you'll see other characters show up. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. And it was like, no, the fuck we will not. <laughs> like, yeah. And I, again, the show ain't over yet. You know, we could see other characters, but like, it's not looking great for those other characters showing up is all I'm saying. But because like, um, I remember when, when Sonic shows up and he's fighting the, the other guys and they're like, oh, the monster, the monster. And you hear the monsters roar and you're like, oh, man, who's this monster? And I was like, wait, Amy wasn't up there. And the concept art was all Amy. The monster, it's going to be revealed to be Amy, isn't it? And then, yep, it was it was Amy. <laughs> That's Jungle World. Um, And then, so you, okay. So then we watch season one, episode six, which is Situation Grim, which I remember distinctly. Um, the feeling when at the end of episode five, when Sonic lands back in New York, I remember just kind of feeling like, oh no, because <laughs> originally I was thinking like, okay, so this show is going to be every episode or every two episodes. Apparently he goes to a new dimension and does a new thing. It's like, oh, we are really spinning our wheels on this, aren't we? Um, I mean, yeah, no, uh, nine puts him in a thing and brings him to a new dimension he's like hey there's like this dimension's like empty and we could to- totally do some cool shit here and sonic's like wait no we shouldn't do some cool shit here then nine's like fine fuck you go back and help your dumb friends and sonic's like okay i will and then nine inevitably of course comes back to help and then gets kidnapped and it's yeah yeah uh anything dad <laughs> no <laughs> okay um and so then we have the the pirate episodes which also suck um yeah i saw my, this was my least favorite just because i think by this time i was so like bored that it like it just all spiraled over because like he like they even do this thing where like he he gets the hover boots and he falls in the water he's like whoa i have hover boots so i'm like oh cool we're gonna do something with that but he doesn't and then in the next episode they're like all right sonic get out there and pull the ship but he's like what i can't swim and they throw me he's like no and he goes oh wow hover boots i'm like oh my <laughs> gosh Oh, I get it. Because the TikTok generation, their brains will have like deleted in between the scenes. So they have to establish it again, right? Oh my gosh! And that's not a diss against the TikTok generation. That's a diss against this show for trading me like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the, that's what the people behind this show think the TikTok generation is like. Um, uh-huh. Yeah, I I saw a fun piece of fan art on Twitter. I think it was by a uh, Gu Gabs. Where it was like Knuckles' old crew, but instead of just some random furries, it was the Chaotix. That would have been fun. Yeah, that's, been... that's here's the thing. That's how you know they're not going to bring like other characters in, or if they do, it's going to be like a season two stinger. Because like, yeah, if they had any like creative ideas in their body, they would have done that. <laughs> yeah, or they would have, or again, they just would have stopped using the same five fucking characters. Like I. Yeah, which, by the way, isn't making me endear to them more because they're different people. Yeah, they're different characters. Like, and so it's like, I just have to, so I just have to get meet, watch Sonic meet Knuckles again for the fourth time. Like, third time, whatever, however you want to slice it. But like, yeah, it's just boring and tedious. Like, it's not charming or like, and also because he has to like fight or like get into a wacky misunderstanding with them every time. Um. The one, the although the one part of that I did appreciate was the joke of Sonic having to like explain himself, and so it like quickly flashes through a bunch of different scenes. It cuts back to him like out of breath. Um, well, and it's like the it's like the end of the day or whatever. Yeah, I thought that was a fun joke. Um, 
but yeah, no, I just, I don't even know what to really say about this pirate story. It's, I don't care. Like, and then they, then that's where they established. Cause like my thing with the chaos council was like, okay, yeah, you know, it would have been cooler if there was like, you know, one memorable Eggman versus five, like whatever Eggman's, but like, they're not going to be in the rest of the show after like this first part. So who really cares? But then they're like, nope. They are the main villains of the show because now they can travel through the dimensions. Oh, joy. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's that. And then they're like, I just, I don't know, man. Like like I said, I thought the pirate designs were fun, but that's, that's really where it starts and ends in terms of like compliments and even insults. Like I got... I got nothing. <laughs> yeah, at this point, I was watching the show at two times speed and not regretting anything. You watch, wait, really? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> if, I watch a, if I watch a show and uh, the directing is not a thing that I care about, then there's no reason to watch it at normal speed. So uh, so I just watch it at two times speed so I can move on with my life and not work on petty, awful things. That's really funny. Um, I, I wasn't smart enough to do that. I, I think also <laughs> I was... Um, so, okay, fun story. So the morning that this came out, um, I woke up to a uh, notification on my phone from YouTube uh, from a viewer on our, um, you remember how I posted a snippet of our first Sonic Prime discussion as like a, as its own video with the, uh, about the silver and shadow thing? Yes. Um, I, there was a comment on that video about like silver being in Sonic Prime and how they hoped he was in it. But my adult waking up at 730 in the morning and not seeing clearly brain thought it said silver was in it. <laughs> um, and so you can imagine my so. So, OK, so my thought process was like, ah, oh, damn it. I would have liked to have like seen that in the show like myself, but also like, ah, oh, yay, silver's in it. And I think I got to like episode. I don't remember <laughs> what episode I got to before I realized he was there was no fucking way in hell you're like that, that guy was... lied to me and then you check well, and you're like no what happened I swear yeah. it was here yeah no well because like i was gonna look back at it but i assumed it was just the person like elaborating on it and so i was like no i'll check that after i watch the eight episodes and i think i can't remember if it was like I don't remember what episode i got to before i realized like there's no fucking way silver's in this show <laughs> but like <laughs> god like That's yeah no I just, you poor you poor unfortunate soul <laughs> yeah no so um yeah i uh, man just i i don't know this just sucks <laughs> yeah i don't even like i don't think we should drag our feet any longer like i don't i my final thoughts like I don't... <laughs> well okay okay wait no i think we should give us some overall thoughts uh characterization i think sonic's fine i think everyone else doesn't have characterization because they're not characters um animation i don't know if i said this before i think is genuinely actually like really good it's not yep. like pixar obviously but like not what it's not going to be it's a streaming show i think, I it, think for... it's very expressive um yeah, and i really expressive. like like i like when the characters are feeling things i i can see it and i think that they do a lot of good stuff with sonic and his body movement um yep i think there's a yeah there are a couple standout shots um i remember one is when it's uh the freeze frame of shadow mid chaos control i thought that was really cool um mm -hmm. And there was another moment that I feel like I remembered looking cool, but I don't remember what it was. So fuck it. Um, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess let's just do final thoughts. We've been going for an hour. Ian, what do you think? <laughs> um, yeah. So going into this show, I was really hoping that because, um, you know, everyone is kind of uh, really enjoying Frontiers. And I kind of wanted a comparison point of maybe a show that would more lean into what I look for in Sonic. But instead, I kind of just got a generic kid show, uh, and Sonic happened to be in it. But even then, Sonic doesn't even really feel like Sonic. And obviously, Sonic has been many different things. But I think more so in this, he really does just feel like every other hyperactive main character who's you know looking to do good in the world is. Like to me, like you watch Steven Universe, he feels like Steve see, season one Steven. Where he, he walks around, he's like, whoa, I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to do good. I'm a good boy. Um, just a little less hyperactive. Um, wait, which wait, what, the voice. What is Sonic like, Ian? Uh, season one, Steven from Steven Universe. But but what does he say? Uh, got a juice? <laughs> I'm, I'm giving you an opportunity to do the whoa, Ian. 
Whoa! <laughs> there we go. That's what we call a callback in this industry. Oh gosh, yeah. But anyway, um, no, I, I don't like the show. Um, originally when I watched it, I was like, oh, five. Like it was, it was the thing I watched, and I'll never think of it again. But the more I thought about it, and the more I was just like, even if you were like some random kid, how could you possibly leave these eight episodes thinking anything about it was like cool? Why? Like if you watch this, would you leave going like, I want like a, a knuckles action figure? Like, I don't know. I just feel like the show fails on every level um, other than moments of being pretty good. But like I said to you before this, I would just prefer if Sonic was just good, you know? No, yeah. not, <laughs> not like, oh, it has its moments. Um, you know, out of s- however many hours I spent watching this, I would like more than five of them to be good. So, you know, so that's kind of the way I look at it. So I'm giving it a four out of ten. It's bad. It's a disappointment. Um... Yeah, for me, it's I remember with Frontiers and it, I think it comes out in our review. I don't know if I said this explicitly, though, having this moment um, because prior to Frontiers, you know, there's I've definitely kind of felt myself drifting away from Sonic of like, you know, I'm not really digging the IDW comics. You know, there's no really show out. The movies are fun, but those only come out, you know, once every two years. And, you know, they're not exactly like, you know, what I would want from Sonic. You know, maybe Sonic just isn't for me anymore. Maybe I just don't like Sonic as much anymore. And then Frontiers comes out and it gives me like a lot, not everything, but like a lot of what I've been asking for from the series. Mm -hmm. And I remember just having this feeling of like, guys, I I like Sonic again, guys. Like, I like Sonic, guys. Like, guys. Like, like I felt like (laughs) fucking Scrooge at the end of A Christmas Carol where I was like, oh, it's it's beautiful. Like, Merry Christmas, one and all. Um, And I feel like this show gave me the exact opposite reaction of like, yeah, maybe I don't like Sonic anymore. (laughs) um and <laughs> well don't give up too much hope <laughs> um and you know i just i like again part of me wants to go like it's a dumb kid show who cares but i think Ian, even you said like there's so many ways it fails at even being just a dumb kid show and also i've liked every sonic show is a dumb kid show like and i've liked those like um sonic x season three is like fucking peak fiction uh sonic uh, sonic side am is really good like i like those both i could go back and watch those anytime and this is just I, like i think it i think i would go a little higher than you ian i think i'd give it a five okay. i think it's not like and generally five is just like it's there i think this is more so a five and that like there's stuff that's really bad but there's also stuff that's like pretty good and that like balances out to a five mm-hmm. um maybe i'll like lower it later i don't know but like I just, yeah, I, and like, look, here's the thing. We're clearly the assholes here because everyone else loves it for some reason. Um, But uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, I, I will, I will say, I will say one positive thing I can give it is that I, I will watch it again and I will drag Ian back to watch more of it. Like I didn't leave it going like, fuck that. I will never watch back into that show. Like, because I do see it having potential. I just, again, these first eight episodes didn't seize upon that potential. And also, um, I hope that whatever story they're trying to tell, they finish within the 24 episodes, because I have zero hope of this getting a season two. Ian, you have any final words before I close this out? Um, Yeah, definitely look forward to, obviously, the next couple episodes whenever they drop. It shouldn't be too long, I wouldn't think, because they'll want to keep hype going. No, no, yeah, I just final season just just ended, and so I've been real busy. So this will come out, and then Silver Age should be like early January, and then um, whatever the the boring one after that was should fall. Well, and I meant for after. Prime. I meant like oh, Prime. Prime. Have, oh, I thought yeah, you like, meant of our show. <laughs> no, no, like Prime will have more stuff coming out probably pretty soon, and we'll talk about it. So hopefully yeah. things improve. My so here's my like cope hope um which is that the first eight episodes were like the they're the part of the show where it's just like we're we're playing with the concept you know we're just having fun um and then now we're gonna get into like actually learning you know who sonic's friends are that would have been nice to do at the start but you know whatever so mm-hmm. you know hopefully now that shadow's here and he's given us the big plot twist or whatever hopefully now going forward we will actually like you know, if we're not going to do more worlds, maybe it would be cool if we do start bringing over the Amy Rose and the pirate knuckles and they become part of our group or something like at least, you know, that way, like the time wasn't completely wasted, but I think it's 24 episodes overall. So there is a lot they could do. Um, yeah. And I am looking forward to at the very least seeing if the show 
can do something more. If these next however many episodes come out and they're just as annoying and boring, then I'll probably give up hope on it, but I'll still watch it and still discuss it with you. So, yeah. But yeah, that's um, all I have to say. Yeah. Uh, real quick before we close out, this will be the last thing uploaded on the Silver Race One channel for this year. Early January, you should get uh, the next Sonic Comic Chaos episode. Uh, I'm going to take the time off to be editing. Uh, but I kind of wanted to leave everyone with a bit of a uh, positivity, you know, ending off the year. Well, first of all, I would just like to say thank everyone for, um, you know, the support on the the podcast throughout this year. You know, my channel was pretty much dead uh, 2021 when um because, you know, I was I started at university and I was just really busy and, you know, I didn't really have the motivation to make content. And so, uh, you know, being able to come back and uh, drag Ian along with me and, you know, seeing people, uh, people enjoying it and people commenting and listening uh, is really great. And also I wanted to say because I kind of had this moment recently um, where I was thinking because 2022 for me personally uh, was not the best. Uh, the, I would best describe it as a year of ups and downs where the downs were maybe a little more plentiful than the ups. Um, and uh-huh. this is not meant to be like a big sob story for me, but um, I realized that there are probably, you know, a lot of people out there who are in a similar position or maybe their 2022 was uh, all downs or it felt like all downs. And I kind of wanted to use, you know, whatever platform I have to kind of reach out to those people and say like, you know, it's, it's easy, you know, this time of year, it's cold and dark to kind of fall into this mindset of like, man, 2022 fucking sucked. Everything fucking sucks. And there's nothing wrong with feeling that way. However, I would say maybe just add a little bit onto that and say 2022 fucking sucked, but you know what? 2023 is going to be better. And I think just adding that little bit onto there could do a lot of good in terms of your mindset going into the new year. You know, I would say find something in 2023 that you personally are looking forward to, uh, be it as small as something like a game or a movie or something as big as, you know, maybe a life event, maybe you're graduating or some shit like that. Um, Just find something you can kind of grab onto and, you know, go into 2023 with your head held high, you know, believe in that, you know, you're going to kick that year's ass. And uh, yeah, and you know what? If nothing else, your favorite podcast will be here for you next year. So yeah, bitching and moaning about your favorite series. <laughs> um, but yeah, with that all out of the way, um, thank you everyone so much for for listening. Um, what a happy holidays, whatever you celebrate, and uh, we will see you next year. Bye. See you guys.